Ooh, what's this? Another Game Gear game. Oh, Virtua Fighter. How the hell does Virtua Fighter run on the Game Gear? That was a freaking arcade game and a it's like a Saturn game. It might have been like a 32X version, but it was a crap version. So how the hell does this run on a portable system that was basically a tiny version of the Master System? Well, you're gonna see how. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual Fighter Animation. I don't remember the name Animation, but, you know. Oh my god, I played this game so many times. So the Game Gear was my portable console of choice when I was little. Now, as much as everybody goes on and on about how the Game Boy was the system, the portable system to own at the time, I'd say that probably wasn't really true until the Pokemon games came out late in that system's lifespan, which uh, the Game Boy was around as Nintendo's go-to portable console for a number of years, but I'd say it's maybe in the last third of it or so that the Pokemon games came out and really blew the thing's popularity through the roof. Before then, you know, you had the Game Boy, and you had the Game Gear, and you had, like, the links or other crap like that that doesn't really matter. And I'd say the Game Gear was definitely the better system in a majority of ways. It looked nicer, it played nicer, it had a lot of good games. Sure, it didn't have that Legend of Zelda game, and it didn't have Tetris, honestly, the only portable game anybody ever needs. But it did have quite a bit going for it, and it was in color, and you know what, you can play the thing in anything other than sitting next to a fucking lamp. The Game Boy was impossible to fucking see. The Game Gear, you know, you could fucking play this damn thing when it wasn't, like, perfect lighting conditions. Of course it wasn't perfect, it was an old LCD screen, so, like, you tilt the screen a little bit. What? <laughs> You tilt the screen a little bit, and then suddenly you can't see it. Oh my god, look at this. This is uglier than I thought. <laughs> I'll kick that girl in the face. Kick her in the face again. <laughs> I should do an entire playthrough of this game. It's not long. It's not long at all. But this is definitely not Virtual Fighter. This is just some weird 2D fighting game that's really fucking slow. Because, like, well, the the Game Gear's hardware was not suitable for... Was not suited for this kind of game. Oh. Just gonna trade punches. Oh. I'm just gonna kick her in the face when shit doesn't work out. <laughs> But anyway, I really liked the Game Gear. The only problem I really had with it was that the battery life wasn't nearly as good as the Game Boy's was. Because the Game Gear ran off of more powerful hardware and its screen had a backlight and all that stuff. So it was definitely a harder game, harder thing on the batteries. Six double A's I think would last like four or five hours or so. Whereas, like, in the Game Boy, four double A's would last more like eight. So I ended up getting that little um, battery pack thing that you're supposed to clip to your belt and then you connect the wire. I lost. I fucking lost. Huh. Well, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, the, I ended up uh, getting the battery pack and that fixed that problem, but it was a little bit clunky. So... I mean, I get why some people would prefer the Game Boy. I ended up getting a Game Boy later, or, you know what, actually, you know, I didn't get a Game Boy. I bought my sister's Game Boy, because she didn't want it anymore. So, oh, there are takedowns, what the fuck? <laughs> if I don't win this one, I'm just going to give up. I bought my sister's Game Boy, and then I switched to it, because I'm pretty sure that the Game Gear didn't see, um, in the United States at least, 
didn't see much support after so many years, and the Game Boy continued to get support. So, like, well, I mean, there's more games coming out for this Game Boy, whereas the Game Gear, you know, its support dried up, you weren't seeing any new releases for it, stores stopped carrying the games because there were no releases, you know. Go to Funko Land or some shit to buy games, but who wants to do that? So eventually I switched to the Game Boy as my portable console. And then, even though I bought portable consoles like the Game Boy Advance and the PlayStation Portable and stuff, portable gaming is just not something I give a shit about anymore. Like, I don't feel the need to play video games when I'm away from home. I drive a car, I don't ride a bus or a train or anything, so... I'm not gonna be a place where I have nothing to do for a long period of time when I'm not home. So... Don't... Don't need to be playing games. I don't play games on my phone or anything. I lost again. Alright, fuck it, moving on. What do we have here? Another one! Streets of Rage! This is Streets of Rage 2. I did not have the original one. I think you play two players? Skate. Blaze. Axel. I can't remember which one I played as a lot. Probably Axel, because... I don't know. I still have my Game Gear, but I haven't turned the thing on in such a long time. I'm afraid that the thing's broken. <laughs> I couldn't bear the thought that my, uh... Beloved Game Gear is dead. <laughs> Dude shadow boxing and gets thrown by the neck. <laughs> Can you pick that up? Oh man, knife and a motherfucker. <laughs> this is definitely I mean Streets of Rage was a fun Genesis game. Didn't own a Genesis, but I knew friends who had one, had them, so I did play some Genesis games in my day, but this, like, it was, the Game Gear was sort of my way, my look into the world of Sega, because I didn't have the Genesis, and although I could play some Genesis games, like, not on the regular, so you had games like Streets of Rage or Virtual Fighter, or whatever, Sonic the Hedgehog. And the only way that I could play them in with any kind of consistency was to be able to play the Game Gear version, and oftentimes the Game Gear version was a shit version. <laughs> oh, I'm done. Okay. And fucking dude, Shoyukin them. Stabby, stab, stab. It's kind of pathetic to think, like, oh man, my 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 primary experience playing Sonic the Hedgehog or Streets of Rage was on the Game Gear. I mean, the Game Gear really was, for the most part, a Sega Master System. But, uh, of course it was portable, years more advanced. I think there were some technical limitations or technical differences that made the Game Gear not quite a Master System, but it was pretty close. And I think it made porting games between them so easy that you saw, um, to some extent, you saw support for the Game Gear for years after you think it would have been because the Sega Master System in some South American countries continued to see like a lot of uh, adoption for, I guess because they, they had distribution rights or the manufacturer of the things down there or something. and. Maybe tariffs or something made that um, an issue. But the Sega Master System continued... Oh, wait, that was the first level. Ah, uh, you know what? There's no boss battle, so I'm going to go through this one. I'm going to consider this part of the first level. Well, you saw continued, uh, like, ports of games to the Master System that you think you wouldn't see. Like Virtual Fighter, although that's hardly a port. That's sort of like a different game in the series, isn't it? Really, Virtual Fighter in name only. 
This is definitely Streets of Rage, although a very limited version of it. Jeez, these jackets must have been on sale at Kmart. <laughs> oh boy. Now the the game that I'd say the two games that I probably played the most in the game gear was unfortunately Mortal Kombat, which had a was the best portable version of Mortal Kombat for the Game Gear is definitely better than the Game Boy Turd. But it's definitely not a good way of playing that game. And I had Sonic the Hedgehog, which surprisingly it was a pretty good adaption of the games. It's interesting to say the least, and definitely doesn't play as well as the Genesis version. But surprisingly good. So I played a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog on the Game Gear. Though I had Streets of Rage 2, I didn't spend... I, I mean, I spent time with it. Like, I, I really only ever played the Game Gear while we were on the road. I'm gonna beat up a dominatrix. Is she the boss? Probably, right? Oh, her health bar is right below mine. Alright, that's got to be the end of the first level. And the last one. What do we have? We have Earthworm Jim. Holy shit. Earthworm Jim. I ended up having this game for both the Game Gear and the Game Boy. I think I had the Game Boy version. You know, it's been so long I can't remember shit anymore. And honestly, I never liked it. I never thought... I thought Earthworm Jim was an entertaining idea. What am I doing? Enter, like an entertaining character, and I thought he, the animations were funny and goofy and all that shit. But I didn't think the game was particularly fun. It's got a lot of... Uh, got a lot of, like, heart to its design, in a way, where they weren't just trying to make another platformer in the vein of Mario or Sonic or something. They went for something here. It's just what they ended up with maybe just missed the mark a little bit. And, you know, I'm, I'm playing the Game Gear version. I don't have much experience with, like, the SNES or Genesis versions, which are probably a hell of a lot better. But, you know... Yeah, I'm, I'm judging Earthworm Jim a little bit too harshly. Because I didn't play the real versions of them. I played these goofy... I played these goofy versions for the friggin' portable consoles. Am I supposed to jump off of this? Fuck, this is terrible. <laughs> there we go. Oh, is that all? <laughs> More ammo? I didn't need ammo. God damn. Wow. This is infuriating. <laughs> oh, a checkpoint. Wow. Um. Oh, down. Those tires there really threw me off. I wonder if there's been ever any talk about, like, sort of rehashing Earthworm Jim. Like, for a modern, modern release. 
Like, it doesn't have to be like a... Was there an Earthworm Gem game for the N64? It's probably garbage. Most games on the N64 were garbage. That console really produced a lot of shit. People, of course, like, they point out to, like, oh, Ocarina of Time, Mario 64. But, you know, nobody brings up Blast Core. <laughs> or the myriad garbage that was out on that machine. Of course, the majority of uh, game consoles are nothing but crap. But, of course, um, you know... I'm, of course, judging the N64 a little harshly. It's a lot of bullshit for the PlayStation 1, also. Okay, I guess I gotta go this way. Uh, I gotta be running up to the end of the level now. What? What the fuck? What am I doing here? What am I doing wrong? What's happening? I can't... <laughs> advance. Oh my god. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I, I know exactly what to do. End the episode. Anyway, that was Earthworm Jim. So we did Virtua Fighter for the Game Gear. We did Streets of Rage 2 for the Game Gear. And I sort of did Earthworm Jim for the Game Gear. Now oh, he shot himself in the face. Awesome. Was this version better than the Game Boy version? Well, it was easier to see. There's that. <laughs> but uh, is it actually better? I don't know. Looks better, I suppose. Because of color. Game Gear had color. That was, I guess, the big thing that made the Game Gear better than the... Aside from the screen being visible, you know? Sound was better, too, I think. The sound was better on the Game Gear than the Game Boy. But the Game Boy had Tetris. So, there's that. 